what's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Lauren Hardy and I am continuing in our journey, the five episode journey of the real estate market cycle. So you learned all about buyer's market phase one and phase two. Now we are on to a, the seller's market, okay? So it was a buyer's market in the first two phases, but now things are moving on and it is now a seller's market. This is exciting if you own property, right? Now remember, not all markets go through the phases at the same time. So for me, when I was in California, we hit the seller's market phase earlier than a lot of areas in the country. So that's why it was advantageous for me as a wholesaler to go to a virtual market where it was still more of a buyer's market and I could get those deals. <music> Okay, so next I'm going to explain the characteristics of seller's market phase one. I'm gonna talk about how to invest in this phase and I'm going to contextualize this phase with an example in my career so this makes sense to you. Before I get started in the characteristics, I'm gonna stop and ask you to do me a favor. If this was helpful to you, I want you to share this episode with anyone you know who might benefit from it. It is my goal to give one piece of practical advice in every episode I do. So if I was able to do that for you in this series, please make sure you share. All right, so next let's go into the characteristics of seller's market phase one. The first characteristic is it's gonna start making sense for contractors and builders, developers to start building again. We have now reached a point of equilibrium where the supply of housing has met the demand. Local homeowners and investors are now convinced that real estate is hot again and they're gonna start dumping their money into property. The days on market have reached low points and there are bidding wars on all sales. Properties are selling above asking price and you're gonna see that it's hard to find a contractor in this market because they're all too busy being builders, building new properties. There is a lot of speculation taking place. People are buying based off of appreciation versus cash flow. So there are investors and regular homeowners that are buying property thinking that it's going to just keep going up in value. They're not buying for the cash flow that it could generate right now or the profit that it could generate right now. They are forward thinking and they are speculating and speculation is something I do not recommend. Affordability is going to start going down. Now, this is a crazy time. Speculation in particular is just crazy to me. And, and why do people do it? Well, back to my previous theory of human nature, people think that the current condition is always going to stay the same. Wherever we are right now, people think that this is gonna last forever. So when real estate values are going up, people tend to think it's just gonna keep going up, but not you because you are a sophisticated investor that understands real estate market cycles. So how should you invest in seller's market phase one? This is where house flipping is very advantageous. When you're a house flipper at this stage, you can almost guarantee that your house is gonna sell for the comps. If not, it's gonna sell at an even higher price. So this is a really good time to be a house flipper. At the later end of this stage, it's a really good idea to cash in on your investments. You can either cash in and just hold on to the money and take that money and go into another market that is more in a buyer's market phase one or two, or you know you can kind of sit and wait and see what happens in your own current market. You could also cash out and use that money and go into a bigger property via 1031 exchange. So let's get into a real life example 
of seller's market phase one in my career. Now, I am not a real estate economist, but my gut feeling tells me that we are in this phase right now. And we've been in it for quite a while in my local market. In fact, I included a graph from Redfin. Check out the LA markets, days on market. We are at record lows. And properties in my area are very, very easy to sell. There's a very low inventory. We have more buyers than we do available properties. There are bidding wars on everything right now. Now I'm getting, again, very personal. This is my local market. It might be different in the market that you are in, but, but to give you some context, I, I wanna give you an example of you know where I am at and how this affected me. And I do feel like we are in this stage right now. I don't know how long we're gonna be in it. It could be years, it could be months, but it does feel like the LAOC market has definitely been in this stage for quite a while. Now, None of that scares me because I have my previous memory of a time where property values did come down and it was a wonderful time to buy and invest in California. And when the market cycle comes back around, I am going to be able to take advantage of it this time. I'm not going to make the mistakes I made before. So again, I'm not a real estate economist. I'm not saying we're headed for a downturn or anything. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, but I would say that my gut feeling is my personal market is in this stage. That's why I am virtual and I am not actively doing any wholesaling in my backyard because I picked up and I left and I went to a more, you know, buyer's market and I am still able to find deeply discounted properties with relative ease because I was flexible in being able to move territories when you know my current market started tightening up. The people that I know that were investing at the same time as me when you know it started getting harder to find deals, the ones that were not fluid and not willing to go virtual Usually what I've seen them do at this point is they turn to more of a realtor model and they are working as realtors versus investors right now. And for, you know, there's some people that that's what they want to do. For me, I didn't want to get into that business. So it was easier for me to just pick up and go virtual. That was more aligned with my values and what I wanted to do in my life. So we are almost to the end of the real estate market cycles. We've got one more phase to talk about and learn about. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe. And if you want to go virtual, if you wanna have that virtual mindset the same way I did, I wanna help you. Align yourself up with someone who is doing it so you can do it too. Check out www.virtualinvestingmastery.com and my team will reach out with to you as soon as you apply. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.